I just want to welcome everybody here. Uh, I want to share, I want to introduce to you Carl Cranes. And Carl is the founder of Prepare for Transformation. And he just returned from a trip to, um, Carl, how do you say the name of this place again? Tegu Sigalpa. It's the capital of Honduras. Oh, that's excellent. That's excellent. So go ahead and if you would, tell us about what God just led you to do. And tell first, before you begin, tell me a little bit about your ministry, Prepare for Transformation, and then tell us what God did in Honduras. Okay, thank you, Tim. This is uh, Tim Taylor, if you all don't know him, and he's a great guy, one of my mentors. And uh, so Prepare for Transformation Ministries, we came up with that name about, oh, almost 10 years ago. Uh, and it, it kind of is what it says. We want to prepare and equip people to build the kingdom of God all over the earth. And I have a, a calling more emphasis on going to nations, connecting with people, how God opens up doors for us, making relations and developing a prayer and evangelism strategies and starting churches, or mostly house churches. So that's it got, that's how it got started with the name, but um, I just sold my business earlier this year. We had a business that God bless us with of 32 years, and we sold it, which propelled me into full-time ministry. So I had made a few visits to places like Belize before COVID, but this is my first trip to go anywhere since COVID, and God just opened up the doors for a host church, which thinks a lot the way we do, Tim, down in uh, the country of Honduras, and so they were such awesome people. All the people were awesome down there. But uh, my, my hosts, Pastor Jose Luis and Pastor Blanca, such precious. Warriors. They're really warriors in the spirit. That's awesome. So uh, tell me about some of the things that God did on the trip. OK, so I want to say just thank you for everyone that prayed. I know we had some people praying and it does make a difference. As we all know, prayer, prayer works. But uh, when I got there, actually, it was a short time before I was leaving. I didn't know they were going to have me speak at five different venues in six days. But God gave me the strength to do it. And they were all awesome people. So uh, some of the things that happened, and I'm going to highlight just a few things. There were so many testimonies. And we'll put some pictures on my website of some of the people that I uh, met and, and ministered with and to. So you can go there later. But um, and what's, the name, what's the name of your website? The website is called prepareforTransformation.com. Prepare and then the, word, the number four, transformation.com. So we'll have some photos on there for you on our missions photos there. So um, from the get-go, I was busy. I was ministering not nonstop. And we had, I, I've got some statistics here for you, Tim. Uh, this is just amazing. Again, I wasn't expecting to preach and teach as much as I went with it and God graced it. And everywhere we went, it was just an awesome time. We, I estimated that we had 23 professions of faith. Uh, 50 to 60 people received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with about 80 to 90 percent of them, Tim, that they they received their prayer language, praying in tongues, their prayer language right away. And then I gave personal personal one on one prophecies to approximately 50 people. And then we had numerous healings. So those are just kind of the, some of the statistics, but uh, here's some of the testimonies. So as far as healings go, there was one church where we were praying and, and I had a translator. So we had a couple other people praying with us, but I remember one lady in particular that I was praying for her and I said, what did you need? And she says, well, my whole body hurts. I said, your whole body? She goes, yeah. And then it popped into my mind and I knew it was the Holy Spirit was that she somehow she was in, been involved in witchcraft. So I just simply rebuked the spirit of witchcraft prayed for her and she was totally healed, no pain whatsoever in her That's body amazing. as a result. Thank and you. so there was um, also at that same place there, I gave an altar call and, and this was the only place that nobody raised their hand, but what an awesome, what an awesome church worshipers. It was just a, the energy there was amazing. But um, one guy comes up to us and says, he's an alcoholic and wants to get rid of his alcoholism. So he repented. We led him in a prayer of salvation and then he got filled with the Holy Spirit and just fell over in the spirit. <laughs> but, little, but little did I know that my driver, Walter, God bless you, Walter. He was on the other side of the room praying. Two more young men came up there with exactly the same story, that they were both alcoholics and they both repented and they both received the Holy Spirit. Oh, that's so, awesome. Th yeah, that's, those are a couple of amazing things. 
Now, uh, there was a, and, and the next night was the last night. This is the, th the th I administered him, but the fourth one was really cool because there was, not because people needed healing, but because of the people who came forward hungry for God to move in their lives. And I remember uh, 190, approximately a 90 year old gentleman. I really love this guy. He, uh, unfortunately, he had a, a brain tumor. They had done surgery on it. I could see the scar on his head, but he still needed a healing. He needed the, the tumor to, to leave him. So we prayed for that, and we're hoping and praying for the results to come in. Uh, it's testimonies later. But I asked him, just like I'd asked everybody, I said, hey, ask him if he prays in tongues yet, if he has a prayer language. And so she, he said no. And, and I said, oh, wow. I said, ask him if he wants it. He said yes. So I prayed for him. And it took about 30 seconds, but I just kind of stepped back. And all of a sudden, he just burst out and praying in the spirit. It was amazing. And isn't that cool? Because here's a man who's never been able to do it. And I was there for him by the grace of God so that he could pray in the Holy Spirit for the rest of his life. And that was amazing. And when you shared that, didn't you tell me that it wasn't like he just got a little bit? He got just all kinds of languages at once? Yes. As a matter of fact, it was just like he'd been an intercessory warrior he had the best release out of any of the people that I prayed for the whole time. That was what made it. Uh, just that was a, a lot of years of the pinup Holy lesson. Ghost. <laughs> now, I want to shift gears to a place that you'll appreciate, Tim, because we, we believe in God ministering to the seven, uh, we call them mountains um, or influences in society. One of them is government and the military is part of the government. But my, my host had been allowed to preach on Monday mornings at the Army armory where they do ammunitions and things there and so it just happened to be Monday and it was he said Carl you're gonna you're gonna preach there so I preached and and we had one salvation and uh, about 40 of the 80 employees showed up which I thought was amazing and then they said okay Carl we're gonna go eat we ate and then they said hey would you mind giving per personal prophetic words to some of the employees here and I said well we're not going anywhere so why not so we first prayed with the colonel I don't know if he's the, the supervising, but what a treasure. Spirit filled the man. I'll, I'll put a picture of him on the website. We prayed and I gave him a prophetic word. And then they started lining up, Tim. I, I tell you, we were there for two and a half hours giving personal prophecies to this place. That's amazing. To the people there. And just adorable people. I just loved every one of them. And here's the testimony there that they had just started preaching there in July. Nobody had ever preached at this place on Monday mornings until then. And they'd had all kinds of division and strife and complainings and murmurings, all the, you know, it's COVID. Everybody was on, you know, on, um, you know, high anxiety during that time, but because of their prayer and the preaching of the word, a, a, a great majority of it had already subsided. And I just believe revival and awakening is coming there. One more cool personal prophecy I had, I'd like to end, end with this. Uh, I was eating lunch at this house with a, these uh, couple of ladies and they, they, cooked me lunch. And then I saw them during the prophecy time. And the younger lady, I told her that you have, not only do you have the gift of hospitality, but I just see you training people in hospitality and cooking. I'd never had the word people being trained in cooking before, but I said, then, then I said, you know why? It's because there's a great revival coming to your, to your, in the area. And you're going to have people come in that need hospitality, that they have nothing or, or almost nothing, and you're going to need that. Then I just threw in the fact that way you're going to be having dreams and you're going to have a group of a team that's going to interpret your dreams to you. Well, afterwards, I found out that she had already been talking with the mothering pa pastor there, pa Pastor Blanca, about this exact thing, about strategizing with, with um, hospitality. And by the way, she dreams dreams all the time. <laughs> So that's that's always encouraging to know that you're not just, well, I hope that's an accurate word. And then you get, you know, you don't know. But that that was just encouraging to me and her. She was very excited about it. That's just awesome. So tell me, what 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 is, do you have any vision or plans for the future there? As a matter of fact, yes, because they all said, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? So I I pretty much have an open door. And by the end of January, we're going to have my new book, which we we feature also on our website. It's the Foundations for the Victorious Christian Life Workbook, and we're getting it translated uh, by an intercessor right now as we speak into Spanish. So that should be ready around February 1st. I'm going to bring that with me, and we're going to talk about some strategy of, of 
uniting other churches in prayer, maybe going into the one church, one, one day strategy where, where we can get prayer going 24 seven there. And then uh, an evangelism strategy, a foundation strategy, and what you and I, Tim, call as an ark. Hopefully we'll get one formed there. I think they're very open to it, Tim, which is right. an apostolic resource center so that they, they, they want to reach the city in unity and power. Now, I've seen your foundation's book, and it's really excellent. It's got a, it lays a, a marvelous foundation in the Word. But you have a specific strategy that you want to use that for to, to help establish churches, don't you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's just basically four things. When, when we go somewhere, I want to see prayer established, obviously, intercessory prayer, an understanding of prayer and all of its aspects, to um, the the, the training using the foundational workbook is an apostolic training tool to equip saints in everything who they are in Christ and in, in the word. And three, start an uh, evangelistic home churches. And then if, the, if it allows, those, those can meet throughout the week. And on Sundays, if we can find a facility, they can join together and then worship and hear the word of the Lord there. And then join these with whatever, whoever is, is similar to us and that we can connect with, because as we know, we're much more powerful when we connect with people and do similar things such as that. That's awesome. Well, would you do me a favor and just end this by leading us in prayer for the establishment of what our Father wants in this time? Because I, in my opinion, what you've just described there, this is really upon our Father's heart. He wants his house built, his house of prayer built. He wants his church established. Um, so lead us in prayer about that. Amen. So, Father God, we thank you so much for your kingdom. And, Lord, we, I just, I'm just i just so blessed, Lord, to be able to go down and meet these precious people. And so, Lord, I just pray that we will all be inspired, whoever's listening, especially here in the United States, Lord, that people will see that it's up to each of us, not just the, the leaders, but all of us are ambassadors. All of us are called. All of us have the Holy Spirit. All of us can do mighty things from, for, with you and with other people, Lord. So I just pray for divine connections through this holiday season, that, Lord, people will, will look and see where can I connect? How can I grow? How can I be a part of reaching the world for Jesus? And I pray, Lord, that you would seal that in everybody's heart. Put a fire in their heart to know you in a, in a greater magnitude and to, to have a compassion and a vision to do the Great Commission and reach the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.